Welcome to the Thrive Master Show, where we reverse engineer action-taking impact makers. Today, we have Dr. Greg Reed, who is an entrepreneur known for his giving spirit and a knack for translating complicated situations into simple, digestible concepts. Dr. Greg Reed, welcome to Thrive Masters. And here we are. We're thriving. Wonderful. Okay, on Thrive Masters, the focus is to reverse engineer action-taking impact makers. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Cool. All right. Uh, for the first question, we're actually going forward to an end that we're all going to face. I'm talking about death. Have you tasted it? Does this serve a purpose in your life? What do you think about it? Yeah, it's interesting. With all the situation that's going around the world right now with the pandemic, I realized I would reverse engineer. And so when it all hit the fan, I called my lawyers, I called my accountants, I called my life insurance and said, hey, tell me how my death style looks. I go, what do you mean? I go, everyone focuses on their lifestyle. I go, what's my death style? And he goes, oh, dude, you're set. Your kid's going to be a millionaire. You got this. You got set. He goes, you left your legacy. And I went, cool. And then I did something even more important. I went outside and I said, well, what's my new lifestyle going to look like now that I know that I'm taken care of? And I said, do I really need three brand new cars? Do I need this stuff? And I started looking at things from a different perspective. So yes, I have seen it. And it really isn't that bad. Wonderful. Okay, let's connect some dots going back now all the way to your childhood. Is there any connections with your childhood to where you are with your success today? Absolutely, because every teacher told me that I was a misfit, I was loud, obnoxious, uh, disruptive, you know, all those things, and I still am today. And more importantly, I realized that I would never let teachers, other people tell me what I could and could not do. So in high school, I pulled up my latest report card and I got a D in English and creative writing of people telling me that I could never, you know, I was, I'd fail at that. Yet I've been published in 100 books, 45 languages, and have a star on the walk of fame for doing it. So the bottom line and moral of that story is, I think I'm going to send a copy of all this to them and say, hey, you might have been wrong on that one. Wonderful. Now, going forward a little bit from your childhood, you mentioned uh, disruptive. Uh, was there a decisive moment? that aligned you? Was it that D that put you on the path that you are on today? Yeah, I started seeking counsel and not opinion. Uh, counsel is based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship, you know, opinions based on ignorance, lack of knowledge. If you tell your family, friends what you're going to do, they might talk you out of it to protect you, to keep you safe, and they've never done it. Counsel is based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. So if I said to them, I want to write a best-selling book, they'll talk me out of it. But if I went to Jack Canfield who wrote Chicken Soup, he's going to say, here's what you need to do and give you counsel. If we would spend our activity only seeking counsel and ignoring opinion, that's the day your life would change. That's the day my life changed. Wonderful. Now, you mentioned the uh, mentors like Jack. Uh, is there other people that have really helped you on your mission? Yeah, every single aspect, but I believe in multiple mentors. So I got a kick-ass tennis coach and mentor that works on my backhand, but I don't ask him about my public speaking. I don't ask my speaking coach about my writing, and I don't ask them about my other businesses. So I surround myself with people I have respect for, not people I have influence over. Wonderful. Okay, so you've kind of had a dream team of people that have helped you along the way. Looking back, what was the dream that set you on the path that you were here? Uh, creativity and someone giving me that aha to give me permission to look at things differently. Uh, from age 20 to 40, I only had one job and I, that's all I knew. And then someone said, hey, you know what? You realized you could do this. And I remember going, wow, and that aha, I sold my business and got into personal development and completely transformed my life and now have impacted the lives of millions. Wonderful. Now you've, you're attaining some momentum towards your success today. Is there some darkness? Is there some demons, some distractions that held you up? Yeah. First of all, you just said today, I, I'm not working toward it. I've already accomplished every single That's goal not. I've ever had in my life. So I've actually accomplished. Now I'm trying to find new stuff because, you know, I, I hit the bucket list and crossed them all off and did the most crazy thing. So now it's like, what could be next? And the dark thing? No, there's no darkness. All I do is I surround myself again with, oh, sorry about that. It means it's time for okay. a recall. I surround myself with people I have respect for, again, not influence over. So no matter how big the journey is or the process, I never let the you know, challenge or limitation stop me. Okay. Uh, so in the here and now, mm -hmm. the work that you're doing today, 
who is the person that is going to benefit the most working with you? Who is your client? Well, I, I'm not a coach. I'm not a, you know, one of those guys. I mean, I'm too busy doing it. I have no time to go, you know, tell people what to do. So what we, every year we do an event. Uh, next one will be in March of 2021. It's called Secret Knock, where Forbes, Inc. and Entrepreneur's Top Business Event in the World. And the way we did it is I got so sick and tired of learning from coaches and teachers and stuff like that. So I said, why don't I just bring in the actual person who's done it? So you can hang out with them. So if you want to start a clothing line, here's the founder of a billion dollar brand, Ugg Boots. If you had an invention, here's the guy who created the credit card, Magnetic Strip and Change Banking. You know, if you want to start a nonprofit, here's the founder of Make-A-Wish. And if you could sit down and have tacos and, you know, hang out with the people who've done what you want to do, it could let, cut your learning curve, you know, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, so now along your journey, uh, would you say, what are some of the ingredients? Like, is it play? Is it time away? For, for disconnecting? What are some of the ingredients that have ha really helped you uh, with your success? You know, I, I'm, I'm different from a majority of these people you're going to have on these type calls. Okay. I think most of these, uh, you know, in, Instagram gurus and stuff are completely full of shit. And so they'll tell you, they say, you know, your size of your library has got to be bigger than your television and all this crap. That it's, it's not true. Look, those type of memes were created 100 years ago before they had modern medium. But in today's world, you are the same today as you'll be in five years, except for the people you meet and the content in which you're putting into your head. Whether you get it from a podcast, whether you get it from a YouTube channel, whether you get it from a book or you get it from a, you know, Instagram feed or Twitter, as long as you're putting content of positivity into your head, positive things happen. It doesn't make a difference the modality in which you get it. Okay, so is there some content that you're putting in yourself right now that's nonstop. Non -stop. And I put it in the form of books and movies and documentaries. And, you know, I listen to these podcasts. I, I go to events. I actually hang out with the people that I want to learn from. And that's what I do differently. So 100 years ago, uh, there was a book published. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called Think and Grow Rich. Have you ever heard yes. of that? Absolutely. Well, what happened is Napoleon Hill was given a letter of introduction by a guy named Andrew Carnegie to meet all his friends and wrote that book. 100 years later to the date, the Napoleon Hill surviving family and the foundation gave me the letter. And so I have a ticket to meet any human alive. And so I write the Think and Grow It series through the Napoleon Hill Foundation. So you know, the first book we did was called Three Feet from Gold, about not giving up before the miracle happens. And I realized that first there's a dream and then there's a challenge and then comes victory. Unfortunately, most people quit in the challenging times. Wonderful. Now, in today today, is there some drivers beyond yourself that fuel you going forward? Uh, giving back, mentoring, uh, speaking in front of people. Is there something in that nature? You know, I, obviously I have a son that kind of drives me, but I don't do it for, it might work for anyone, but for me. And I think if you do, you're for selfish reasons. So the whole idea is it's, it's, it's you, you got to sit there and say, what is it that I need to learn? So, so it, be selfish is what I'm saying is I think people should do that. A good writer and a good author writes about what they need help with the most. So for myself, I was a quitter. I quit everything. So I did a book called uh, Stickability you know, how to not quit through the most powerful, you know, challenging times. My thoughts, well, I had negative thoughts. So I did a book called Thoughts Are Things with Bob Proctor. The whole idea is like, how can you do these projects that you need to help on with your most? And by doing it, it's like therapy, you'll work your way through it. Wonderful. Now you've touched upon like knowing yourself and you clearly do. How important is that where you sit down and actually analyze this is what works for me and this is what doesn't work for me? Well, here's the deal. You need another book, a CD, a seminar, a program, like a freaking hole in the head. You don't. What you need to do is look into a mirror and say, dude, this is what you need. And then shut the hell up and go do that. Because, you know, how many times I get off stage and 10,000 people come up and say, well, help me. Here's, you know, what do I need? I have no freaking idea. I don't know who you are. Only you know who you are. You know what you're capable of. You know your skills. You know your talents. You know your setbacks. You know your fears. You look in the mirror and say, hey, this is where you need to go. And then give yourself direction and then start doing that. Then maybe hire a coach to show it to them that kick you in the butt to keep going. It's kind of like if I go, look, I need to lose 20 pounds. I can see that clearly in the mirror. I can hire a coach to, you know, make me show, I show up at the gym. So you can do those type of the things, but you know what you need most. Wonderful. So we've talked about death. We've talked about your childhood. We've talked a little bit about it here and now. Looking forward, are you a dreamer? Do you envision uh, your direction that you're going in? And how would you go about that? 
Yeah, it's always what's next in my world. Again, when you've done 100 books and 45 languages and all this different stuff, it's kind of like, what's the next process? So I don't get caught up on any one thing. And what's interesting is all my books that are coming out this year, I wrote three years ago. And all the ones coming out next year are ones that I've worked on the last year and this year. And it's just kind of like an ongoing process. So right now I'm writing you know, six different projects, but more importantly, I'm working on a TV show, which I think will be a great phenomenon. But for the people that are in the movies, uh, this is kind of cool. Have you ever heard of Make-A-Wish Foundation? Yes. Well, I asked the founder of Make-A-Wish what his wish was. And he said that no one ever asked him. I said, well, I'll grant your wish. And he says, I just want my story to be told. So he gave me the rights to his life story. And it took me six years. We made the ballad for the Oscars this year. And now we're trending on Netflix today. It's called Wish Man. And once you go check this one out, you will trust me. You need some Kleenex nearby. Wow, that's amazing. Now you've asked uh, that person that question. How important is it to ask yourself questions? It's imperative. And again, it's looking in the mirror and then answering those questions honestly and directly and doing something about it. Look, many receive great advice, but few actually profit from it. And the secret of all personal success comes down to this. Simple little thing. People watching this, I'll give you one little thing. It's called CPC, Clues, Patterns, Choices. It's about accountability and responsibility. Stop blaming other people. It is your fault. If you want a brand new Bentley and don't have one, shut the hell up. It's your fault. Do something about it. If you are in a bad relationship and don't like it, shut up. You're the one who kissed ass and courted that person to be in there. Do something about it. CPC works like this. If I go out on a first date, the woman's 20 minutes late, it's a clue. But if I go on the third, fourth, fifth date, she's late, it's a pattern. It's my choice whether I deal with it, adjust it, break up with it. It's not her fault. She's just late. Stop trying to change people. Same thing and see someone with a bad reputation in business. They cheat your best friend. You do business thinking it'll be different. And when things go wrong, you're mad at that person. You saw the clue. You saw the pattern. You made the choice. It's like seeing a rattlesnake rattle, bite your kid's sister. You pet the snake, get bit, and you're mad at the snake. Grow up. Dr. Greg Reed, I was thinking we're going to have a 30-minute to an hour conversation, but you know what? This has been amazing. And I just want to lastly ask you, how can people connect with you? Well, on Instagram is the easiest way. It's Greg S. Reed. If you send me a DM, it goes directly to me. No filter. And the only thing I ask is I don't want to talk about the weather, what you ate for dinner. But if you say, hey, what's a good book to read? Or, you know, give me some good counsel. I'd be glad to do it. The secret, again, is to surround yourself with people you have respect for, not people you have influence over. And I'm going to give you a quick little tidbit of how you get access. Because the most successful people are the most available. This is it. Specificity. If I'm going to interview the creator of Chuck E. Cheese or, you know, Chick-fil-A or whatever the heck it is, NASCAR, I'm going to reach out to them and say, listen, I need 12.5 minutes of your time. And you got to honor this and say, I will cover all my time and expense to get to you. From the moment I open the door till the time I leave will be 12 and a half minutes. I'm going to ask you one question, X, Y, Z. And then at 12 and a half minutes, your alarm goes off and say, our time is done. It's time to leave. And either they can inter you know, request you to stay or you can leave. But that's how you do it. But no one wants their brain picked. No one wants to go to dinner with you. They don't want to have coffee with you. Stop asking. The more specific you can be, the more accessibility you'll have. I'll give you another example. If I'm on stage and there's thousands of people, afterwards they say the nicest things. How can I work with you? How can you know, we do this? Again, I don't know you. I don't have 30 minutes to do an interview. But if I come off and you go, dude, I saw your Instagram. You have half a million followers. I dig your memes. Tell you what, I'm going to make you a custom one, send it to you. If you like it, maybe you'll use me. Done. 15 seconds. I know who you are, what you do. You got my email and my, my phone number, just like that. That is the key to have an achievement. Go right to the front of the line. Wow. Thank you very much, Dr. Greg Reed. I appreciate your time. You got it. Bye. All right. Bye.